Hello and welcome to this FIFA 18 experiment and today I'm going to be doing the Premier League versus the Serie A also known as the Calcio 8 in FIFA 18 and the way I've done this is that I've gone onto a website called whoscored.com which has the average rating of every player so far in the season based on every performance they have made in the Premier League or in the Serie A and on there they've got a starting 11 which shows you the best players for each position and it's in a 4-4-2 formation so that's why I've gone with a 4-4-2 and I've put all the players that I could in those positions but on FIFA they don't always play exactly where they play in real life Hazard is actually a centre mid on this thing that I'm looking at so I've moved him over to the left as he's got a higher rating than Sane move Sane to the bench and then put Silva in there as he's the highest rated midfielder based on his average rating so here we have a team with some interesting players. Pope, Tarkowski, it's not the highest rated, but it's a very, very good based on the players that performs the best over the course of the Premier League season so far from 2017 to 2018. And for the substitutes, I've done the normal format, which is goalkeeper, fullback, centre-back, then two centre-mids, and then you've got the winger and the striker. And to find these, I've just gone down the ratings and found the best rating or plays with the best average rating in that position and we've got Fabianski, Delft, Smalling, Fernandinho, Pogba, Sane and Firmino or Firmino and Lukaku is in reserves he won't be playing I just need to put him in there just to fill the squad up I've chosen Spurs to represent this Premier League team because they played against Juventus and unfortunately they were knocked out they were close to winning it and getting through, but unfortunately they did not come out as victors and they ended up being knocked out. So, it'd be quite interesting to see Spurs versus Juventus. And I'll show you the team in a minute. But 4-4-2 formation, it's solid, it should help them create chances and hopefully have a balance to the side. So it's a 4-4-2 flat. The instructions though will be exactly the same as standard. I haven't changed any of these. And then the tactics are as normal, 50 all the way down, organised, free form and cover. And that should be the same for the other team, so it makes it fair. But now we'll look at the Serie A team, or the Calcio A team, as it's called in FIFA 18. And we've got Alberto, Gomez, Insigne, Dybala, Pjanic, Suso, a very good midfield and attack. And I've moved some players around and added another player in there, Pjanic, who's then got the best rating for a centre mid, based on the positions in FIFA 18. So, it's very, very good, but there are some weaknesses in this squad. Calabria is struggling with a 75 rating, but in real life, he is the best right back in the Serie A. So, I'm expecting good things from you, but it is FIFA, and it usually bases its performances on the rating and the attributes. So, it's interesting to see how it's going to do this. You then got in a subs bench, Nicolas. So, Nicholas is 68 rated, but he is the second highest rated goalkeeper based on performances over the season in this area. That's impressive. He's had a great season for Verona and Alexandro next to him. If you switch Nicholas' rating round, so you switch the 6 and the 8 round, you get Alexandro's 86. Incredible. And then you've got Fazio and you've also got Torreira. They're the four substitutes. But the the start 11 is not bad. There's some good players in each position, really. But the substitutes, eh, it's interesting. So, these four players here, they're quite good. But then you've got other players now, like Torreira, who's quite an, a good, well rounded player. But then Nicholas, who really brings it down. So, it is, it, it is interesting. It is a different squad to what I was expecting. Then you've got Milinko. Milinko Milinkovic, Savic, once I finally managed to pronounce it, Perisic and Immobile, who probably won't be moving very much, so he might not be that useful. We'll find out in the future. So, playing the same formation, the 4-4-2 flat. Then we have the instructions, all as standard as usual, and the custom tactics are 50 all the way down, organised, reform and cover. So now you've seen the team, let's get into the match. So it's Spurs versus Juventus who will come out on top in this match both teams are now side by side and you've got Tarkowski, Pope, Young and Calabria the four players that are struggling 
for rating? Can the other team exploit his weaknesses? Maybe with Suso down the right wing for Juventus. We'll find out in the game. Who will win? Who will score the most goals? Let's find out right now. So Juventus kicked the game off to start this epic match. Alberto to Insigne who cuts inside and he puts it onto the bar unfortunately. Oh that's unfortunate. It could have been a goal but it's still nil-nil. And that was the first chance of the game. Pochettino decides to do some Zumba mid-match to get the energy flowing in his body to get the excitement going as well. Suso then puts it into the box and Pope saves it. It's an easy save and it's still nil-nil. Insigne to Dybala. It's wide. It looks close from that angle, but it's not. It spins off to the left and it's miles wide. Now Insigne to Alberto to Pjanic who hits the post. Unlucky, they've hit the post and they've hit the bar match. A through ball to Valencia, a fast right back who puts it onto Aguero's head, but it's saved by Allison. It's quite a weak header in the end. Now Gomez out wide to Suso, who's got the pressure of a defender, and because of that, he lacks composure and wastes the chance. Now, Suso with some close control dribbling out to Insigne who puts it wide but Pope still decides to save it. That could hurt them because if they score from this corner, then it'll be Pope's fault in the end. Into the box now, but Pope comes out there with a massive punch to command his area here. Dybala here, but he gets tackled well from Hazard. Now it's half time, it's two shots to six. Juventus have a dominating side with more possession and more chances created. But there's still no goals, so in theory it's an even playing field. It's a very even playing field actually, as to who can score this on and get get the win basically. Anyway, we'll kick off the second half. Aguero shoots, hits the post, hits Allison's gloves, and it's still 0-0, but they have a chance here. And Pjanic gets the ball and takes it away. Aguero round the defender, he saws the ball here to Salah, who puts it along the ground. It's the goal, 1-0 to Tottenham Hotspur, the Premier League side, who have got the best Premier League players in it. And now they're winning the team that has the best Serie A players in it. Amazing scenes, incredible. And now we've finally got our first goal of the match. Gomez now on the right hand side, they need a goal or they will lose. But that is not going to help them. Poor shots like that. Straight to the goalkeeper. Won't work. Aguero cuts inside here. To Salah. Who doesn't score his second goal. He was close. But not close enough. Now we have our first substitution. Sane on for Salah. But then Juventus. They make three substitutions straight up like that. Torreira on for Dybala. Perisic on for Suso. And Immobile on for Gomez. Perisic up to Benatia. Perisic! Oh, it's being deflected wide. Still 1-0 and they still need a goal. Fernandinho on for De Bruyne. I was expecting De Bruyne to stay on. But he doesn't. Now it's into the box and it's a poor delivery. Sane has an easy job there of getting the ball out there. Hazard though on the attack now with a through ball but it's just a bit too soft and the defender picks it up now spurs are resulting to an offside trap to stop the quick counter attacks from juventus maybe that'll help them keep the lead there's not long left though only five minutes a ball throws to kane this could be their second goal but it's an exceptional save from allison now juventus have the ball to go back on the attack once again and they score their goal now insigne pass the defender Past another one. He's got the space to shoot and score. And he does so. It's one all. Right at the end of the match. The dying moments. They've done it. How have they done that? Oh, that is incredible. Absolutely amazing. The excitement is it, it, it's incredible. I'm on the edge of my seat right now. And I can't believe it. They've scored in the last minute of the game. That is unbelievable. And there's pretty much no way Spurs can get another goal now. And they haven't done. So it's eight shots to nine. One all. 48% possession to 52%. 
So Juventus have created more shots and had a bit more possession, but it's still been an even game and it took that long to score their first goal. So we'll go into extra time, play another 30 minutes and this time Juventus have control once again with the kickoff. Anyway, who will do all right in the extra time? It's only 30 minutes to go now. Benati has a shot, but Pope ends up saving it quite easily. It's their 10th shot of the game. Kane here, up to Aguero. Can he score this? Here's the post again. But Sane rebounds, or well, gets the rebound and puts it into the back of the net. It's 2-1 to Tottenham. They're back in the lead. But can they keep it? Can they keep the lead that they've worked so hard to get? It, it does seem weird though when you see Sane hugging Pochettino. It does, does it seems so strange. But the toe poke from Sane with a bit of backspin puts it just below the bar and past the keeper. Anyway, Aguero here with a ball across the box and Kane puts it into the back of the net. With not long to go now in the first half of extra time, they're winning by two goals and it seems certain that Juventus will win this. But if Tottenham can score two goals, so can Juventus. So now Juventus need to come back and get some attacking doing, get some good attacks and try and score a goal maybe. Early on, but what a nice finish and a nice bit of play to pass it across. 11 shots each, the first time this has happened but Spurs have four more shots on target, but 6% less possession. This is getting tense now, but it is getting a bit of a thrashing there. As well, we're getting a bit of a thrashing from Spurs, should I say. So they need to hold on to this lead now, hold it on, and make sure they don't concede any goals early on in the second half of extra time. So Sane at the halfway line, pass it back. But it's a poor pass and Immobile puts the ball forward to Alberto and he scores! 3-2, only one goal in it now. If they can score that goal, they will end up drawing it and going to penalties. Incredible scenes, what a goal. Lionel Salah goal, but from the other side. Alberto, the centre forward, just it's just sublime. And it means that it's 3-2. One goal left, Spurs have a lot of pressure on them now to not give up this lead now Sane through to Kane will this be the fourth goal and will it make it game over for Juventus no it's off the post oh how has that happened what is going on 3-2 Sane with the ball oh no it's cleared out there Alberto and it's being deflected with only about two minutes go Kane here up to Sane could this be the fourth goal and make it game over Oh, it's poor. It's a poor shot. But do Juventus have enough time? They don't. They've lost 3-2 by one goal. How close was that? A five-goal thriller. But Spurs end up coming out on top. Incredible scenes here. Amazing. And it means that the best Premier League team based on average ratings of who's played the best in real life over the season is better than the Serie A team. So that's interesting, very even, 13 shots each, as the score was quite even at 3-2. There wasn't much between these two sides, but what happened was a very exciting game. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and you will see another video similar to this one on Wednesday. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.